All right, so as I pointed out in the very first example of this um, hydrolysis reactions of mixing salts in water, essentially, you first have to do a dissociation reaction or an ionization. So that arrow goes completely forward. Dissociation reactions uh, are not equilibria unless they're saturated. And in this case, we're assuming it's a homogeneous solution. Um, the other kind of reaction you're going to write is when water is a reactant. And in that case, it doesn't actually go completely forward if you have weak conjugate and weak parent. Instead, we want to be careful to write an equilibrium arrow. Okay, so dissociation reaction, reactions happen, and then you want to look at each cation separate in how it reacts with water and each anion separately with how it reacts with water to see if there is an overall change in pH. So your general process is going to be first write the dissociation reaction and then write hydrolysis reactions for each ion and then see if hydroxide or a um, hydronium ion are formed. If hydroxide is formed, it's an alkaline solution. And if hydronium ion is formed, it's acidic. Okay, so we want to use some of our examples to fill this in. So the cation and the anion do not react with water. So that would be like, for example, ammonia, uh, sodium chloride. Sodium, we did before. When it reacts with water, you get NaOH. And H plus, this reaction does not occur because NaOH is strong. For chlorine, we didn't do this one specifically, but um, it would want the H plus, so it's going to make HCl and hydroxide, but HCl is strong, so that reaction also does not occur. So if the cation and the anion are both going to produce strong products, then we can say that the pH is neutral, it's not going to change. The H plus and OH minus are not formed in other words. And then A and B show us examples of that, right? So if we form the conjugate base, um, or sorry, if we form a conjugate acid that's strong, it means it's not going to react with water. If we have group one, like sodium, potassium, those generally don't react. And some of the bigger elements, so the ones toward the bottom of the column, usually from calcium down, um, don't react either because they are also strong bases. Um, now, if we have an anion, so that's a negative charge, so a negative charge that reacts with water, it'll make hydroxide because it steals the H plus but the cation doesn't react. That would, of course, mean that we're basic. OK, so that example was when we looked at what acetate does, right? So this is where the cation is negative. It makes a weak acid. It forms hydroxide as well, so that's basic. OK, finally, if the cation reacts with water, oh, it's not finally. There's two. But if the cation does react with water, then you're going to take the OH minus, because that's positive, right? So it takes the OH minus and leaves H plus or hydronium behind, depending how you look at it. That would mean that the pH is going to be acidic because you're making hydronium. These are the cases when that's going to happen. The, con the cation is a conjugate of a weak base, or it's a small cation with a really large charge. So conjugate of a weak base is a weak acid. So acetic acid is a weak acid. You make acetate and hydronium ion. So that's going to be acidic. Or if you think about it in terms of like our, our metals here, aluminum also, even though it doesn't have any hydrogen in it, aluminum also steals a hydroxide and makes hydrogen ion. So both of those are cases where it would be acidic. Now, if we have the case where both the anion and cation do react. You have to do a little math to figure out which one is more dominant. They're both going to happen, but whichever one has the higher K is the one that influences the pH the most. So you would have to look up the Ks or maybe compute them using the pKW equals pKA plus pKB like that, or KW equals KA times KB.
Okay, so this is a fun question. So we have to look at each one separately. First, we're gonna dissociate. And then, oops, I didn't even, I just rewrote it. <laughs> and then we're gonna look at what each piece of the ionic compound could make. So step one, dissociate, and then look at each hydrolysis reaction and see what it makes. So K plus is positive, it's a cation, so it's gonna take the OH from water and make hydrogen. That's a strong base, so that's not gonna happen. Bromine is an anion, so we're gonna take the H and leave behind the OH. That's a strong acid, so that doesn't happen. So this would be neutral. This process is gonna keep repeating itself, and this is why I told you it's very, very handy to know the strong acids and bases, because it's much, much faster to do this if you're not looking up those things every single time you need to find them out. You also have to be aware of your polyatomic ions, so that might be something you need to review from Chem 1. So for example, recognizing that this is gonna split into two pieces is an important thing to have in your, in your head. I'm gonna write this in a different color so it's easier to see which one's which. So we're gonna react our ammonium ion with water. And so, again, this is two different ways to see it, but uh, I like to think of it as donating from the ammonia to the water. And that, of course, produces ammonia and ammonium, so this is weak, that reaction does occur. Then we have nitrate, nitrate plus water it's negative, so it's gonna take the positive and leave behind the hydroxide. This is a strong acid as well, so that does not happen, which means this solution will be acidic because we produced hydronium ion. Okay, so you're gonna keep doing that, and I want you to tell me which of these, there's multiple correct answers, are gonna be acidic. We already found one of them. Keep going. This will be the in the learning check, you're gonna tell me which letters A, B, C, or D are acidic. Now, another kind of question that you're gonna get is to rank these things in order of increasing acidity. In order to do that, you still have to follow those same steps, right? So first we have barium acetate. It's another salt because it's a metal and a non-metal polyatomic ion. So the first thing that's gonna happen, I hate it when it does that, is we're gonna ionize it. If you need to review this, I think it was about chapter four where we talked about net ionic equations. That's kind of where you learn how um, salts ionize. All right, and so then we're gonna take each piece and react it with water. So barium is positively charged. It's gonna take the hydroxide portion and leave behind the hydrogen ion. And the question is, is barium one of our strong? And so it's at the bottom of a group two. So it's right here, if you can't see. Okay, so um, that means it is strong, everything after calcium. So that reaction won't actually occur. And of course, we already know, we've seen this a couple times, acetate definitely does react with water it's gonna make acetic acid and hydroxide. So that means that barium acetate is gonna be a basic solution. So high pH. NH4Cl is going to dissociate. And then we're gonna treat each one separate from, from each other to see what they do with water. We've seen this one before. We know it forms ammonia and hydronium. Oh, <laughs> I usually wipe the, wipe the water first. I don't know why I did it the other way this time. It doesn't matter, by the way. It doesn't matter at all. And then the chlorine, um, we, we just did that one a second ago, but it does not react with water because it forms hydrochloric acid, which is strong. So that one's gonna be acidic, okay? And finally, we have KNO3. 
which is going to dissociate to form K plus and NO3 minus. We did K plus just a second ago, and it makes KOH and H plus. So that means no reaction because KOH is strong. And NO3 we just did um, also a second ago. It makes nitric acid, which is strong. So that is also no reaction which means that this one will be neutral. So in this case, it was actually pretty easy to put them in order, right? We're gonna go, um, it says increasing pH, so acidic will be first, and then neutral will be next, and then basic is last. Okay, um, sometimes they'll be trickier and they'll actually throw in like two that are acidic. If that happens, you have to compare the KAs. If two things are neutral, they're going to be both equal. So I want you to try to fill in these um, summary items. I will give you the answers in the next video, but it's a really, really good idea for you to pause for a minute and think about these things and see if you really understood what we learned.